All you need to learn machine learning in 2025 is a laptop and a list of steps you need to take. I said it last year and I'll say it again. But this time, I'm an actual research scientist at one of the best AI startups in the world. And it took me over six years to get to this point. And nowadays, you have so many new and amazing resources that way too little people know of. So today, I'll share how I would learn machine learning in 2025 if I could start over by revealing the six key steps you need to take. Let's get going. Well, this one feels obvious, doesn't it? But what might not be so obvious is how much Python you actually need to learn in the beginning. In general, all these steps don't have to be strictly followed in any particular order, but I would recommend to not start with the final and arguably most important part. But what I do recommend to start with is learning Python. Python is the programming language used by anyone working in ML, so it is very important to get the hang of it. Many of the following steps build on your fundamental understanding of the basics of Python. So I would definitely want to know what a list and dictionary are and what their differences are, how to implement a for loop and if else statements. I would even go as far as knowing what list comprehension and class inheritance are. And honestly, I don't really know what else to say than just type in beginner Python tutorial into YouTube or Google and get started. There are so many amazing, extensive free resources that you can use to learn the basics of Python. But make sure to always code along. Now, here comes perhaps an important step, which is I would want to build some cool little fun projects after learning these basics. Straight up jump into the cold water and build something like a calculator app or a simple website, a snake game, or whatever these beginner Python projects are. I would honestly just want to really have fun here, but not spend too much time here. Especially if you already know how to code and just want to learn the basics of Python, don't spend too much time trying to nail the Python experience. Because although you have to know Python and be good at programming, I would not tackle that in this stage yet. So let's go to the next one. Learning machine learning does not require complex math. After studying it for multiple years, I really stand by the statement. So much of machine learning can be covered or be understood with really fundamental concepts that are mostly undergraduate level. Even professional ML engineers, a large part of them, don't require complex math in their day-to-day -day life or even in the interviews. If I were to start over, I would want to learn mainly three to four things. How to do derivatives and integrals, although even integrals are rarely super relevant, what vectors and matrices are and how their basic operations work, which are also just rules you learn and to have a lot of intuition behind them, the basic concepts behind probability theory, which boil down to a fairly small set of concepts and mainly base rule, and finally some random math tricks that make our lives easier. For example, the log rules and summation rules but you pick those up on the way. These concepts and rules will get you immensely far in machine learning. With many of the new and different models that you learn, they're all just a different application of some of these rules. Understanding them on an intuitive level, especially the probability theory part, that might be a bit more challenging. At least it was for me. But it's still not a lot, and it certainly isn't rocket science. That said, the more you learn, the better, of course, and especially if you want to go into research, you will want to learn a bit more math, get a bit more practice applying the math, and perhaps just get a better intuition. So with all that said, how would I actually learn math in 2025? Well, there are of course many resources, but one that is pretty new, straight to the point, and just amazing is This book called Why Machines Learn. I know, I know, books are kind of scary and perhaps a bit outdated for some of you because video courses are so much more convenient, but I really don't think they have to exclude each other. In fact, this is something that I will recommend a lot in this video, that there are different resources that you can use to learn the same concept. There's not one book 
lecture or course that covers everything or that will help you understand a concept from the first go. But this book covers a lot of the fundamental math in a very fun and understandable way. I can really recommend it. It builds up the idea of how linear equations work and how they directly apply to neurons in neural networks, what vectors are and the most important operations like the dot product, how matrices and the relevant operations work, and of course the math behind training a neural network, gradient descent. A ton of amazing explanations and intuition on probability theory, and so much more, all the way up to how convolutional neural networks work. Now, does this book cover absolutely everything? No, of course not, but it covers a ton of the fundamental math that you need. What it, for example, doesn't cover is actually teaching you how to do derivatives. So, in any case that I would not understand something, or he just skips something, I would just look that up myself. Type it into YouTube for some nice YouTube videos, type it into Google for perhaps some nice blog posts, or something that you can do in 2025, is even use an LLM. Those are surprisingly powerful, and I genuinely use them in my day-to-day -to, -day to ask questions. That said, be aware that LLMs can hallucinate, i.e. state factually wrong things. So yeah, just be aware of that. Now, if you do want a specific recommendation for a math course that I might use myself, I would then probably recommend the same thing I recommended last year, which is Khan Academy. Nevertheless, in general, I would try to stick to this book and expand from there. The amazing thing about this book is it teaches you math in the context of machine learning and already touches on many of the concepts in ML. But that said, let's have a look at what I would do after reading this book. I would now continue to learn everything relevant to machine learning and deep learning. Finally, right? Now, I deliberately split up machine learning and deep learning because they are a bit different and they are taught separately. But the machine learning part or the classical machine learning is perhaps not the most flashy things you see nowadays with all these deep neural networks, but it definitely is core knowledge. So I would not want to skip this part. There was already a lot covered in why machines learn, but of course, not everything. So next, I would simply take Andrew Nung's machine learning specialization course. You there learn many new machine learning models like logistic regression, decision trees, recommender systems, and more practical advice on how to develop machine learning models. Another great thing that comes with this course is practical exercises, which is amazing. You learn things like TensorFlow, and you will actually implement your first machine learning pipelines and train your first models, which is super exciting. So up until now, I've learned basic Python, the fundamental math necessary for machine learning and deep learning, have learned some of the basic machine learning models, and have actually coded up my first machine learning pipelines and trained my first models. But now comes the really exciting part. This is the exciting part, but also the part where you have to make an important decision. Do you want to learn deep learning to a level where you can understand the current machine learning techniques and models and apply them to a certain problem? Or do you really want to learn deep learning? Looking at non-conventional models and applying the fundamental math in more complex ways and with a focus on a bit more theory. You see, machine learning is still a very new and empirical field, which often requires much more other skills than just an understanding of machine learning theory. Building cool ML projects or even ML products in reality simply often does not require a fundamental understanding of the theory. So if I wanted to learn deep learning to a point where I could get a job as quickly as possible, I would pick the first option, which I would call the applied path. In that case, I would not spend too much time learning a ton of deep learning theory. So I would just take Andrew Nung's deep learning specialization, where you learn again a lot of fundamentals and actually get some practical coding exposure. Yet again, no resource has it all. Unfortunately, this course does not really cover the transformer architecture, which at this point is just mandatory to know. So for that, I would simply watch something like Stanford's CS25 series, which is available on YouTube. And I'd also watch basically all of Andre Karpathy's YouTube videos and try to code along. Now I should be decently equipped to jump to the next chapter of this machine learning journey, which is probably the most important one. But before we get to that, 
Let's have a look at what I would do if I really want to learn deep learning and then get a job at one of the top companies and even set me up for my path as a researcher. Okay, so what I would do is work through another book called Understanding Deep Learning. This is an absolutely amazing resource with a ton of content about deep learning. It basically touches on every relevant model in deep learning that you will need to know. I will not list all the different topics that this book covers because it's a ton, but you will see them here on screen. The amazing thing is that this is actually a free resource. It's available as a free PDF online and you don't have to buy the book. I bought the book because I want to support this actual project. What's even greater is that it actually has a lot of theoretical and practical exercises for the different topics it covers. I mean, even this book does not cover everything. It doesn't really cover RNNs and LSTMs, which is a bit unfortunate, but I guess it is because it puts more emphasis on the transformer architecture, which is the very dominant architecture these days. Everything exists out there on the internet. What you really need is someone to take you by the hand and tell you what to learn, or in other words, a curriculum. And this is what this book offers. It is a very dense book and it covers a ton and it will take a lot of time to work through. But you don't need to rush through this book. There's at least one more chapter along this machine learning journey that is at least as important as understanding the theory. In fact, I wouldn't rush through this book in one go. I would mix it with the next step that we'll get to. Projects. I cannot emphasize enough how important projects are. As mentioned before, machine learning is still a very empirical and practical field. So basically, no matter what job you are striving for, you will have to code a lot. First, there of course are some fundamental ML developer stack libraries like NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib for manipulating and visualizing data. They again are really nice tutorials on YouTube and even a 20 minute tutorial will be enough. After that, you need to use the tool. And when it comes to the actual machine learning frameworks, such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, or perhaps even JAX, there again are amazing tutorials online. But there's nothing that teaches you a skill or a tool or anything better than actually applying it. So in the beginning, I would simply start with Kaggle. And do not underestimate the complexity. Really start with earlier or beginner level projects so you don't get frustrated and demotivated. And if you do try to attempt more challenging challenges where you can actually win a prize money, don't expect to win one because it really is difficult and you often need a lot of compute available. With Kaggle alone, you can already go quite far, especially if you continue on progressing to more and more advanced challenges. But if you want to go to more complex projects that are Outside of just a Jupyter notebook that would be relevant for machine learning engineers and researchers, you would want to go to the next step, building actual bigger and challenging projects. And my favorite project to work on, which I already mentioned in my last year's video, is re-implementing a paper. And how to do that is for a whole another video or mu way too much for this video, but it is a challenging problem and you learn a ton. So make sure to pick a paper that is more suited to your level. So you don't get frustrated and give up because that is the worst thing you could do. You really learn a ton by reading papers alone. That's a whole art in itself. And you learn even more by just looking at code that other people have written. And if you're getting really good at machine learning, you can perhaps even find ways of improving some of the recent works. And at that point, you are basically already a researcher or at least an engineer, okay? But still, what I would make clear to myself is that my first project will not be a good one. My second one will probably also not be the best one. But with every project that you do, you will work on more increasingly complex projects that are more and more impressive. And this is really important to know because this makes my next bonus tip much less scary. No matter at which point I would be on my machine learning journey, if I were to relearn machine learning, I would want to somehow show my work and present myself. While learning machine learning fundamentals, I would perhaps write a little X or LinkedIn post. 
when learning cool new deep learning techniques, I would perhaps write a whole blog post explaining it or a LinkedIn post. But most importantly, whenever I work on a project, I would somehow want to, again, write a blog post or perhaps even make a working demo website. I mean, this is what once got me an internship interview with a Google DeepMind researcher. I worked on a project and then wrote a blog post for this project. And the final level would be actually writing up a paper about your project. You can always do this and upload it to something like Archive. But the final boss of the final level is actually getting your paper published at a pretty nice conference. But at that point, you are pretty, pretty far in your machine learning journey. It really, really takes a lot of time. Look, I will repeat this again because it's important. It takes a lot of time, at least depending on where you start your machine learning journey and how much time you can dedicate to active study. It will very likely be really, really challenging at some point. And you will very likely be struggling when learning the math or coding. At least I was when I was learning it. That's why I would recommend watching this video next. I there share the secret tips I learned over many years by myself that helped me learn machine learning in a more easy way. So yeah, in the end, don't give up and try to have as much fun as possible. Bye bye.